Hi, this is Scott with Maker37.com. Today I'm going to paint a hook. It's actually pretty freeform. Uh, the the uh, customer who asked for this hook told me she wanted a blue hook. And uh, so it kind of leaves it to the imagination. I never really know what colors I'm going to use. It kind of depends on the mood that I'm in. And uh, I like to experiment with color. So a lot of times the hook won't come out exactly uh, as I planned. Uh, bear with me on this. This is the first time I've actually ever done a voiceover. So it may sound a little bit clunky. Here I'm just kind of experimenting with shading, kind of seeing uh, how this blue, lighter blue is gonna look on a darker blue. I am drinking a cup of coffee as I do this voiceover. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking here. <clears throat> I was going for, uh, I pulled some brown paint out, some really dark brown. And um, yeah, it just didn't, it didn't really look right. But actually when you use the wrong color or a color that you don't necessarily like, sometimes when you fuse that in with uh, the colors that come after, you can have, you can make some pretty cool effects. I've actually had people say, uh, wow, I wish you would make me that hook. I want it just like that. That's virtually impossible for me to do. Uh, I, almost every hook that I paint is different, and I never know ex the exact amount of each type of paint that I use. Uh, sometimes I'll actually, um, I'll sand the whole hook off and, and I'll start over. That's rare, um, but a lot of times that's the way it goes down. So it's hard to keep track of what color of paint and what mix and the, the exact amount of each paint that I put on the hook. Yeah, here I'm getting ready to load up uh, on some more of that blue and I put it on the back end of the hook and it gets a little bit sloppy. Sometimes it's, it's uh, hard to get that perfect combination between too much paint and not enough. And depending on what effect I'm going for, uh, that can be kind of a, a challenge. Here I'm, I'm, I like to blend, but I'm actually trying to go for uh, more solid lines with, with a clear edge versus kind of a, a messy look, which I also like, but um, that's not what I'm going for here. There's some yellow. I do like a sharp contrast. A little bit self-conscious when I was painting this hook because I knew I was trying to, to do a video that I was going to post just to show the, the kind of show the process. And um, even as I look at this now, I'm thinking, what what exactly were you thinking? But I don't I don't think I really was thinking too much. I do like yellow and blue together, but in this case, I went a little bit over on overboard on the paint. And uh, I think I thought, should have thought about what I was doing a little bit more than, than I did. So I'm going back over the hook with a paper towel because it's getting a little bit sloppy. I actually like the look of blending that comes with using a paper towel or a dry brush. Um, I like to be surprised. Yeah, still dabbing with the, the paper towel. Then I'm going back in with some more blue. I actually, um, I like to try to do things in odd numbers. And I try not to make the curvature part of my hooks too round. Like you'll notice on the back end of that hook that that is not a perfect sphere. One, it's difficult to, to get a perfect sphere and it takes a lot of extra time. But two, the human eye uh, doesn't like perfect shapes. They like things that are a little bit off kilter. Uh, so I always keep those two things in mind, odd numbers and not going for for too round or too perfect uh, a shape. I think that makes things look manufactured and not, not as handmade. It's just a personal preference. Okay, this is a couple pictures of the finished hooks. Um, I haven't cut the head yet, but this is kind of what it looks like with the, the hand finishing on it. Thanks for uh, watching the video. Check us out, maker37.com.